Today, I'm catching the new Eurostar service. That's right, Eurostar finally goes to Germany. I'll be riding this high-speed train from Brussels in Belgium and speeding through the countryside to our destination. So come on board as we discover the new Eurostar, from the onboard seating and features to the tasty meal service and cafe car. And I'll even tell you the big problem with this service, as we run at up to 300 kilometers an hour across the border. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here at Brussels South in Belgium and I'm going to be travelling with Eurostar. Now, the Eurostar brand is one that is known for linking London with Paris, Brussels and Amsterdam. However, due to a recent merger with Thales, they now also serve Germany too. I'll be travelling on board one of these trains here, the Eurostar PBKA, from Brussels over to Köln in Germany. Let's go! Good morning from Brussels South Station. The two names displayed on the building are the station's name in French and Flemish Dutch, the two most common spoken languages in Belgium. But now, let's head inside this big busy station for a look around before we depart. This part of the station feels fairly modern, having opened in 1992 to facilitate the arrival of TGV, Eurostar and Talis high-speed trains. And indeed, just within the entrance of the building, you can find the Eurostar terminal for trains to the UK though our Eurostar train departs from a different area, and more on that confusion later on. Next to the Channel Terminal is the International Ticket Office, where you can buy tickets for cross-border trains, though I'd recommend buying online, directly from the Eurostar website or app. The area by this entrance features a lot of shops and food outlets to use before starting your journey. Many of these seemed abandoned, and some of them even vandalised. Unfortunately, the area around this station suffers from a lot of antisocial behaviour and crime, so take extra care. There's also a large car hire office with various companies to choose from. And just outside here across the road, you'll find the Eurostar Lounge, for those travelling in premium class. Back inside the station, there are some secure luggage lockers, handy if you have a long connection and want to explore the city. There are also these active phone chargers, letting you exercise while you charge your device. The central passage has a bunch more catering outlets and shops, including this classic Belgian chocolate shop, a pharmacy, and um, passed away. Hmm, this name doesn't work too well in English. Anyway, departures are displayed using this classic LCD segment display. My train is Eurostar 9423, departing at 11.25 to Essen Hauptbahnhof. Brussels South Station sees a lot of traffic as the main station in this European capital, with over 50,000 people using the station each day. The majority of trains are commuter trains operated by SNCB, Belgium's national operator. SNCB also run long-distance intercity trains across Belgium, with occasional services into neighbouring Luxembourg. Some services are run to Rotterdam and Amsterdam in the Netherlands, together with NS, the Dutch national operator. And there's a bi-hourly service to Frankfurt am Main in Germany, provided by German ICE high-speed trains. But my train today is operated by Eurostar, a multinational operator that exclusively runs high-speed trains. This company started off in 1994, running from London to Paris and Brussels, finally connecting the UK to the greater European rail network. However, in 2023, Eurostar merged with a company called Talis, promising greater connectivity and smoother ticket booking. They even launched a new brand identity, meaning all services operated by the new company would be branded as Eurostar. This has led to two completely different services operating under the same name, but the confusion doesn't end there, as we'll soon get to. My train soon arrived at the platform, and wow, I just love how the former Talis livery looked. The red and silver definitely makes it stand out as a premium train. This fleet is a type of French TGV, with this one being designated as a PBKA set. Eurostar has a fleet of 26 trains like this, with some of them being of the similar PBA model, both dating from the mid-1990s. 
I'm travelling in Eurostar's standard class today, so let's head over to Coach 25 and find my seat. Boarding these TGV-style trains is usually chaos, as they have very few doors. And today is no exception, with a long queue forming at the door to board the train. Eventually, I made it on board. Standard class is in a 2 plus 2 layout, with the same rich red colour scheme as on the outside. My seat is number 88, a forward-facing seat without a window. Today's route is a simple high-speed ride from Brussels, through the city of Liège and into Germany for the final stretch to Köln. Journey time is scheduled to be 1 hour and 50 minutes, covering 222 kilometres, or about 138 miles. We depart on time at 11.25, slowly weaving our way through the complex junctions of Belgium's busiest railway line. Along the way, we pass some of the other stations in the city, such as Brussels North, served by most trains running through the city. It's not long before we are out of the congested central area and beginning to build speed. But before we reach our top speed of 300 km an hour, let's have a look around the interior. The seating itself looks fantastic, thanks to its vivid and plush looking design. And sure enough, there is loads of padding here, which made for an extremely comfortable seat. The ergonomic support was also good. And up top, there's a massive winged headrest, and a thick padded headcloth. All seats have folding armrests, and these were also nicely padded. As for legroom, it's pretty tight, there's not enough room to stretch out. It's okay for trips of this length, but on longer routes this would be annoying. Beside the seat is a small control panel. On this, you could find the recline button. This was a bit difficult to showcase though, as I had someone sat next to me. There was also a button for the individual reading light. The seat in front featured a folding table. This was surprisingly large and would be ideal for doing some work on. On it, there's a little metal bar to hold a drink in place. And also a strap, which I'm told is for holding newspapers or magazines in place. Down here, you can find a storage area for smaller items, as well as a folding footrest. Back outside, we're currently heading towards the high speed line, and passing through many stations along the way, such as Erpsk Verbs. Leuven is another stop we pass through, and has a beautiful modern station. It's the 8th biggest city in Belgium, as well as being home to the largest brewing company in the world. From here, we take a series of flying junctions, weaving between domestic intercity services to reach the HSL2 high-speed railway. This allows us to accelerate up to our incredible top speed of 300 km an hour. Travelling at this speed is an absolute breeze, and the great suspension of the Eurostar PBKA fleet means you barely notice any movement. Unfortunately, the terrible window alignment meant that I couldn't actually see any of this, and I spent most of my journey staring at a wall. I really wish there was a seat selector, like there is on some other Eurostar services, confusingly. This was really annoying especially as there are so many of these seats with a terrible view. As I couldn't see much of the Belgian countryside, I chose to use the onboard Wi-Fi instead. This was easy to connect to, requiring just a couple of taps. However, the Wi-Fi speeds were absolutely pathetic, and barely even worth using. On a more positive note, every seat gets a European-style power socket, even in standard class. Also down here, there's a little bin to help keep the train tidy. After 45 minutes, we're on the approach to Liège. This is Belgium's fifth largest city, and serves as a key junction on the country's rail network. The city is home to liège guillermain station, an impressive structure designed by the Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava. The design features a monumental arch shape, with colourful patterns and plenty of natural light. 
it's really quite the sight to behold. After a four minute stop, we are back on the move and heading towards Germany. On our way out of Liège, the train crosses the river Meuse, one of Europe's major rivers. Time to get some food. The Eurostar Café is situated in coach 24, though it's more like a bar than a café, with a spacious and airy design and places to stand. The menu is expansive, but also fairly expensive. Though there are some special offers, allowing you to bundle multiple items together for a better price. While waiting for my food order to be prepared, I spent a few moments taking in the pleasant atmosphere here in the Eurostar cafe car. It was definitely a popular place, with many passengers standing and chatting over a drink or two. After around five minutes, my order was ready. I went for the cheese pizza, a pack of salted crisps and apple juice. This cost €11.70, Euros fairly costly, but not too bad for on a high-speed train. And it was actually really nice too. Now moving on to first class, in a spacious 2 plus 1 seating layout. These seats really look like armchairs. Eurostar has two ticket types for first class, with the more expensive one including a complimentary meal service. We've now effortlessly crossed the border from Belgium into Germany, possible thanks to the two countries being members of the Schengen Agreement. There's a bit of a stereotype in Germany that says trains are always late, and sure enough, we're held just after the border while awaiting a platform. Ladies and gentlemen, the station of Aachen is not yet ready for us. We should be able to leave in two or three minutes. After this minor hold-up, we pull into Aachen Hauptbahnhof, with the abundance of trains in the iconic DB livery, an indicator we're in Germany. Aachen Hauptbahnhof is an international rail hub, being sat at a tri-point border, with frequent local trains running to both Belgium and the Netherlands. After a few minutes, we are once again accelerating back up to high speed. We even pass one of the German ICE high speed trains, and what looks like an abandoned station. Luggage space can be found in the form of sizeable overhead luggage racks. There are a few luggage stacks in the vestibules too, but as there are lots of reports of luggage theft on the former Talis trains, I prefer to keep my luggage nearby. You'll also find a stylish coat hook between windows, and if you look closely, you'll notice this is still branded as Talis. If you actually get a window seat, then you'll find an effective adjustable blind as well as an air vent along the bottom of the window. By the way, these windows were absolutely filthy. Unfortunately, train cleanliness is very lacking in Western Europe, and this premium high-speed train was no exception. Each carriage has one or two toilets, found next to the gangways. These were in good condition, though they were really cramped. The soap dispenser was working fine, as was the water. A hand dryer was also provided and working well. Passing through the beautiful station of Düren is a sign that our journey is nearly over, so let's talk about the problem with this service. Well, despite being branded as Eurostar, it doesn't actually run to London. Instead, it's a separate Talis service run under the Eurostar name. This merger has caused a lot of confusion, with the two former branches of the Eurostar company having completely different travel classes, and varying policies on luggage, lounge access, and ticket flexibility. And speaking of tickets, I booked my standard class one-way ticket two months ahead, which cost £21. For this two-hour high-speed train trip, I think that's pretty good value for money. As we begin to pass through some of Köln's suburban stations, the train slows down. We also pass by the large maintenance facility here, where you can see various DB and Flix train sets awaiting their next duties. And eventually, after a further delay within Germany, we pull into Köln Hauptbahnhof 15 minutes late, at 13.30. 
Overall, I had a comfortable and quite pleasant journey with Eurostar today, except the lack of a window view. My biggest complaint has to be the confusing merger, which appears to cause more problems than it supposedly fixes. But as always, let me know what you think of the Eurostar PBKA trains in the comments, and to compare this old TGV set to Germany's incredible new high-speed train, then click up here now.